I, th I think this is a really interesting development. What, one of the key weapons that we've seen in the Ukraine war are precision guided munitions. You mentioned the HIMARS, the high mobility artillery system. Uh, people will, will have heard the British Storm Shadow uh, and other missiles. These are, are basically missiles with, with a high explosive warhead that can travel over great distances and hit precision targets, you know, hit a, hit a 5p coin, if you like, many hundreds of miles away. Now, at the moment, these munitions are incredibly expensive. Um, and, and also they're not many of them. So when we hear about something like this and the fact that the Americans are getting very excited about it on paper and what we know about the Blackbird missile, it does seem to be, you know, the real answer to a lot, a lot of issues that, that, that we've currently got. So we're expecting it to come into service very quickly in the next, you know, two or three years, which is phenomenal. Um, it is. It's been uh, taunted or vaunted as being cheap. Um, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, not millions. And actually for this capability to what we currently have yet, it, it is cheap. And uh, the uh, contracts that have been let are to produce thousands of these things. Um, so so what that background, you, you sort of tend to get excited. Then you look at the actual capability of this missile itself. Um, we, we hear it's, it's traveling at nearly 4,000 miles an hour, you know, five times the speed of sound. This is what we call hypersonic. Um, so what, what, one of the key things when missiles are traveling that quickly, it's very difficult to intercept them and, and knock them down with, with current sort of air defense that we have. So, so that seems a really big plus. Um, and, and it's range too, you know, people are being fairly circumspect, but what we understand, it's sort of 650 miles plus, which again is hugely significant. That's about three times the sort of high Mars range. We're almost getting into cruise missile range. And we've heard a lot of talk about Tomahawk cruise missiles over the last couple of weeks being a game changer. But if you can imagine, instead of having, you know, 10 or 15 cruise missiles available, you've got thousands of these available. You can then see why the Americans are really upbeat about it. You know, the Chinese and some of the others are, you know, really looking at it with open mouths. So I, I'm always a bit circumspect about talking about game changer, but this seems to be the answer to the current and, and the likely uh, battlefield in the next few years, certainly. We sort of know what the Chinese are developing here. We've seen quite a lot of the Russian hypersonic missiles, which have really failed to do very much at all. Um, you know, despite the the propaganda coming out of Russia, um, virtually all Russia's hypersonic missiles have been shut down by Patriot Air Defense, U.S. Air Defense, and other. So, um, so I think uh, you know, on the face of it, it would appear that that the Americans are one step ahead. And I don't think this is too surprising. I think people need to understand actually when it comes to military capability, um, that the amount of money the Americans spend on it, the amount of defense companies the Americans have, you know, the, the, the tech available to them, you know, wh whatever, whatever the Chinese might be doing or the Russians, you know, they, they are still pretty small players when you, you know, look at it against, against the US. So I think there's a real statement coming out of, America going, yeah, you know, and a lot of it is, is about deterrence. So we, you know, if we, we stand fast Ukraine for a moment, uh, President Trump and the Americans seem to think their biggest threat is from the Chinese. Um, so this seems to me very much saying, look, we have this weapon sort of now, you know, you might get it in five or six years time, but, um, you know, we are still the biggest dog in this fight and uh, you need to take notice. So I think there's a whole lot of messaging going on here uh, and it's really, you know, Uncle Sam, if you like, flexing their military muscles um, to people like the Chinese going, yeah, you, you're, not, you're not at our level yet. So, um, you know, any ideas you have about, you know, invading Taiwan or anywhere else, you know, get back in your box sort of thing. Although these weapons are coming into service very, very quickly, it's still a couple of years hence. But uh, no doubt there will be a bit of um, 
bit of nodding towards Russia. Um, and, you know, rather than threatening to use these weapons in Ukraine, I think it'll be it'll be more the Americans just reminding the Russians that they are, you know, they are a few steps ahead. You know, when, when you look at something like a stealth fighter, you know, we call it fifth generation aircraft. You know, the, the Russians are still fiddling around in the sort of third and potentially fourth generation. When we look at these missiles here, let's say they're fifth generation, the Russians are third or fourth. So again, I think it's more of a, yeah, again, as I, I use the vernacular, flexing their military muscles. Um, but, but in warfare, psychology is tenors to one the physical quite often. Um, and, you know, the, the great Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu uh, exposed, you know, if you can win a war without fighting it, that is the best solution. And if you can convince your enemy that you are so much stronger than them, then that that is that is what Sun Tzu is getting at. So I am sure that this is uh, seems to be directly aimed at the Chinese, but with half a nod to Moscow and Putin saying, you know, we are well ahead in the technology race here. So when we say we want a peace deal and ceasefire, you best listen. One would hardly say the state of uh, threats around the world are, are anything but normal. Um, we, we've talked about the potential Chinese threat, but at the moment, um, the Americans or, or Putin and Trump are, are, are absolute loggerheads. You know, at this very moment, as, as President Trump is putting sanctions on the Russians, uh, which are really beginning to bite, it, we understand. And we have, you know, some of the Russian uh, commentators like Peskov and Medyev saying that, that Russia is very close to war with the US and is very close to using a nuclear weapon. Um, you know, you, you can see why the, why the Americans are so keen to show, particularly the Russians, the lesser extent, the Chinese, that, that they are, they're ahead of the game. You know, they have capabilities way beyond anything that Putin has, that the Russians have. So again, without wanting to be, uh, too detrimental, you know, sort of get back in your box, C come and negotiate a peace in Ukraine, because if you don't, um, you know, Blackbeard is going to be around pretty soon and, um, you know, you are going to get singed by it. So a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of talk, a lot of propaganda as it were, but it's trying to shape the battlefield, um, to your advantage. And the Americans obviously believe this is a hugely capable weapon and all with the, we're learning about it. And all we know about the fighting in Ukraine at the moment, you sort of come to the conclusion, yeah, th this is this is really, really something that you want to have on your side and you don't want your enemy to have it.